so funny story. Um, I started a reading vlog back in June, I believe, um, and didn't get past, like, saying, hello, I'm reading a book now, um, and, like, opening <laughs> to the first page, um, and then I never actually read the book. So, uh, that's this vlog. Here's the tiny opening. I'll see you in a minute. Welcome to my channel, I'm Mandy Grace, author of 10 young adult novels so far. And welcome to another reading vlog, um, only the second of the summer, which is slightly depressing because I brought a lot of books to the farm, but it's fine. I'm going to be diving into On Wings of Ash and Dust by Brittany Wang. Um, I adore Brittany, she's lovely and wonderful. She does have a YouTube channel if you want to check out her writing and such like. Um, yeah, this is technically a serial, so she published... Um, I want to say there's four or five of them. You can kind of see them in there, the little lines. Um, four or five little, uh, like, pieces of the story, episodes, as it were. Um, but I got the paperback, which has all of them in one, because I'm just I'm just a hands-on type of person. I didn't really want the ebook format. Anyway, that's a story for another day. So yes, I'm going to be reading this out. Um, also... I did get, um, I was part of a pre-order campaign, so I did get this, um, you know, her signature to stick in here. The, what do you call that? There's a name for that, but I don't remember what it is. Yay, we love maps! Six! There's six episodes. There we go. Anyway. Yep. Welcome back to the present. Um, <laughs> I am going to be reading this book. I saw on Instagram yesterday that there's this thing happening this week um, called Indie Author Readathon, um, which is on in Instagram specifically. But it did um, remind me that I haven't been reading since June and I need to get back into reading. And the book that I was supposed to be reading but didn't actually read is an indie book, so I was like, you know what, let's just do it except on YouTube. So. Um, this is me participating in the Instagram thing, except on YouTube. Well, I'm not actually participating, but like it inspired me to read, and it happens to be an indie book, and here we are. So anyway, yep, we're actually going to read this book now. Spoilers, by the way. Um, I've spoiled everything in this book. Anyway, hi. So um, I was reading at a point <laughs> where there were people in the house, so I wasn't willing to talk to the camera at that point in time. Um, but I was keeping notes on- why well, I just whacked my nose- on what was, I don't know, interesting me or whatever. So the first note, um, is that my jaw literally dropped when, um, the- what am I saying? The moment happened when you figure out who her dad is. Um, yeah, I don't know. It should have been obvious, to be perfectly honest. Um, it- it was very, um, I don't know if you guys have seen How to Train Your Dragon, which is like my favorite movie series from my childhood, literally ever. Um, anyway, <laughs> but it felt very much like that where there's this opening battle scene in How to Train Your Dragon and then like all these things are happening or whatever and then Hiccup is getting scolded by the chief and then he's like, oh, forgot to tell you, <laughs> that's my dad. Um, yeah, it felt very much like that, but somehow I did not actually put it together until the moment that Quinn actually said, you know, Hey, that's my dad. And I was like, what? Anyway, yeah, no, I was reading and I was pacing because I don't know why I do this, but I pace when I'm reading. And I literally stopped walking and just like slowly covered my hand over my mouth. And I was like, man, I should have been videoing this because that was quite a response from me. Um, anyway, so that was the first thing. <clears throat> what was the other thing? Oh, magic is my next note. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a book about... Faye and they're running around like with their wings and flying all over the place or whatever um, but somehow <laughs> I I don't know I thought that was going to be the extent of it and then the moment fire like came out of her hands I was like what kind of a book is this um, yeah so that was exciting uh, yeah and then I like grabbed the cover wherever it is 
and was like, oh, she's literally holding, like, blades with fire coming out of them. I don't, this is, I don't know, it should have been obvious again, but it wasn't. Yeah, that was my notes. Um, so there you go. I'm gonna keep reading and try to read at such a time that I can read. I'm sorry the dog is barking like a maniac outside. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the book during the day when I have the space to turn on the camera as I'm reading and be like, this thing happened, instead of taking my notes, because it's not quite as interesting for me to recap how I was feeling when I read it. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I adore the little boat. Okay, um, thoughts, now that I'm five chapters in to this book, um, I am really enjoying it. Um, I love fantasy, so honestly anything fantasy, I'm like, yes, this is my jam. Um, I really enjoy the whole fairy, fae aspect of it. Um, I like the different clans and, like, the different, um, culture and world building between each of them. I think it's really interesting. Um, it's not something I've personally seen before in a fantasy book of the ones that I've read. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. Uh, I think it's very fascinating. I will say, um, the fight scenes so far have been kind of tame. It's, I mean, it's a book about a pirate fairy and she does a lot of fighting, you know, with her cutlass and whatever. And it's aerial fighting, some of it, because they're fairies and they have wings. And... It sounds epic, and like, it's not bad, and the fight scenes are fine, you know, um, but they're not like super intense and epic the way that it sounds like it would be. Um, but that's only, there's only been like two of them so far, so maybe the later ones will be more interesting or longer, <laughs> maybe, or anything. The, the two fights basically ended as soon as they began, um, and then also, like, weren't very descriptive, and honestly, it didn't feel like, uh, Brittany was really utilizing the unique aspect of, like, fighting in the air with wings, um, I don't know. And this might also just be because the most recent fantasy books I have read have been, like, big hitters, you know? Like Brandon Sanderson. Obviously no one's gonna write like Brandon Sanderson, so it's not fair to compare <laughs> to Brandon Sanderson. But like, his fight scenes are just so interesting, you know? And every movement, like you can picture it and see exactly what's happening, and like it's intense and you're in the moment, and I'm just, I'm not feeling that from these fight scenes. And I really love fight scenes, um, I like reading them, I like writing them in my own stories. I don't know that mine are any good either, to be honest, if I looked at them from, like, a critical viewpoint, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just haven't been enthralled with the fight scenes yet, and I want to be because fight scenes are fun, and also because it's, like, a large part of this book, I would assume, um, and so I don't want to be... I don't want all the fight scenes to be lackluster, I guess, is what I'm saying. But apart from that, like, the story itself is super interesting, and I'm definitely, like, feeling the emotions of our main character. We just had the funeral for her twin brother, which was tragic, and honestly, I hadn't remembered that that was happening. So it's literally on the back of the book that he dies, so it's not really a spoiler. But I hadn't, like, read the back of the book in months since I bought the book. Um, when I started reading it, I just started reading it. I didn't, like, reread the back of the book. So, um, yeah, I did not remember that he died. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> How could you do such thing? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so no, I'm definitely, I'm feeling the emotions of it, and, like, I'm definitely invested and super interested, and I'm enjoying it a lot so far. But I think the fact that I am enjoying it is what's making me more critical, you know, because I want more, you know? I think... I think that's that's basically where I'm at. I don't really have other updates, and I'm not that far into the story yet, so I don't know. Well, we'll see how we go. <laughs> okay, I was not expecting the best friend betrayal, particularly so early in the book. That just came out of nowhere. Um, yeah, she she was captured and negotiating with her dad, and the whole scene. I was like, but why, why would he, why would he be doing any of this? And then, and then it all made sense. I finished 
book one or whatever it's called in a serial. Um, episode one? I don't know. Now on to episode two. Finished section two. I honestly don't, I don't write or read a lot of serials. Um, I have no idea what the proper terms are for <laughs> what I'm reading. Anyway, we're on section three now. Um, we finished the first trial and it was interesting. Um, I felt like it went too fast and also like the pressure of being in an enclosed space with spikes slowly coming towards you was not present enough. Like, it felt easy. I wasn't worried at any point for Quinn's safety or the safety of any of the other kids who were locked in their own boxes. Like, it was... I don't know. The fear wasn't there. Which wasn't... I Honestly, it wasn't a bad thing in the scene itself. I wasn't bothered by that. But then later, a few pages later, Quinn made a comment about, like, the terror of being in the box, and, I, and that's when I noticed, and I was like, was it terrifying? Yeah, basically, when I was reading the scene, bless you, when I was reading the scene, it w bless you again, it wasn't <laughs> bothering me, but then later, when there was like a callback to the scene, I was like, that's not how I felt reading the scene, that's not the way it was playing out. Um, but anyway, aside from that, it's still very enjoyable. I like the, um, different dynamics between the five kids that are in this tournament thing. I think it's going to be very interesting moving forward because we're going to each of the, um, fairy clans for different trials and I think it will be fascinating, um, at the very least. I'm having a hard time not comparing the book to another book with a sort of, like, tournament situation in it. Um, I'm really trying not to compare it because it's its own, it's its own thing and it's completely different and whatever, but I am, like, having to actively strive not to compare it. <laughs> and the book in question being, um, The Savior's Champion by Jenna Moresi. Also The Savior Sister, which is a companion novel. Um, I think the main things that are, like, striking me, I guess, is that the, the fight scenes aren't as intense, um, and the, like, pressure of being in high-stakes situations, like, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like pressure. But, it is enjoyable, like, it's a fun read, I like the characters, I like the way that they interact, um, I don't know, the banter and conversation is fun. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I feel like I like everything except for the high-stakes situations, where it's like, I'm not, I'm not necessarily feeling the stakes. Things are starting to get interesting now that we've made it to number four of whatever these things are called. <laughs> I should probably look that up. I'm gonna go with episodes. I like episodes. It's a good word. <laughs> Things are getting very interesting with the, like, mystery and intrigue and the end of the world because Quinn is having visions and then Hickory had some sort of painting vision that matched her nightmares and the symbol on her daggers that matches the one on the old book. Like, there's something going on here and I'm definitely interested in it. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. The mystery definitely has me, like, sucked in. <laughs> and also the second trial, which was, um, like, showing off talents to this beast called the, Le the Leviathan. Um, I just ate my finger. Did you see that? I don't... Anyway, that was unintentional. <laughs> anyway, um, it was, it was better this time. I could def I could feel more of the intensity and the pressure and the, like, oh, this is a high-stakes situation. Like, I could actually feel it this time. So that was good. Uh, yeah. I think that portion, um, what was I calling them? Episodes? <laughs> Forgive me for not knowing what I'm talking about. Anyway, yeah, I think the third one was my favorite so far. And now we're moving on. Okay, um, I finished the next episode. Um, the intrigue is building and I'm very interested in what's happening. Um, 
Quinn was uh, apparently poisoned and almost assassinated, and the hooded figure that we don't really know what's up with him, if he's related to the mystics, who knows. Uh, we don't know what's going on with that, and her dreams have intensified, and like, things are going down. Um, yeah, all of that is very interesting, and I'm excited to keep moving forward. The mystery and the mystic stuff and the like, Queen being all suspicious is definitely heating up. I didn't really feel the stakes of being in the labyrinth. Um, maybe more than the other high stakes situations, but uh, just because it was like an entire chapter or two chapters of things happening. But I feel like everything A happens fast, like Quinn meets a problem and then finds the solution. Um, so there's not enough buildup to like, what is the solution? What am I going to do? Because it's like the very next paragraph she finds her solution. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think also part of it is like the lack of an emotional response. I feel like there's not enough time to build the tension of each scene. I feel like um, there's not enough description to like make me feel like I'm there. I'm the one in this situation. I you know, I'm seeing this and feeling this and like panic, you know, like I, I, I don't feel like I've been transported to this situation at all. Um, so yeah, the lack of tension in high stakes situations is like a recurring problem for me specifically. I don't know if everyone feels that way, but like I have not connected with the stakes in this book. Um, but the mystery and the intrigue of like the magic stuff and like is the world ending, is the queen behind it, like, um, that kind of stuff is very engaging and I'm really enjoying it. The characters themselves are very vibrant and interesting and I love them. Um, I just, I just don't feel stakes. <laughs> there are stakes, um, but I'm not necessarily feeling them. Like at the very beginning of the labyrinth, um, a Quinn made a comment like, you know, people don't come out of the labyrinth, you know, people die or whatever. Um, but that just made it, that made it more obvious to me that I wasn't feeling stakes because I was like, she could die. And I'm sitting here not feeling like she could die. <laughs> and then also the fact that when she got out um, of the labyrinth on the other end, like, sh I don't know, everybody had minor injuries, you know? Like, nobody was actually torn apart in any sense so it was like you failed to build the tension of she could die um, and then also like apparently that tension shouldn't have been there anyway because nobody was even deeply injured people had minor burns or like a black eye or whatever like nobody was in a hot mess so I was like why why try to set up they could die if you're not gonna follow through in some sense like have someone be mutilated even if they're alive you know um, I don't know. I just, I, the stakes just aren't a thing for me in this book. Okay, um, she's going, she being Quinn, is going through a whole emotional situation about killing, uh, the antagonist of the story. Not the big bad villain, I assume. Um, just, you know, the guy who's been bothering her this whole time. You know, like the Draco Malfoy to her Harry Potter. Um, anyway, yeah. So she killed him in self-defense in a battle um, during the last trial <sighs> and now she's on this whole like well crap I killed someone train which doesn't make any sense because um, when she was a pirate she was killing fairies all the time and there's some measure of like trying to explain that away like I was doing a job and this one's different because it was you know personal or whatever but I'm not I'm not feeling it. Because she was killing people indiscriminately at the very beginning of this book, I just don't, I don't buy that she's so torn up over killing someone who has never shown an ounce of humanity any time that he was on screen. Every time that he was around, he was horrible and like being cruel and awful and whatever. Like there was never anything redeemable about him whatsoever. So I'm just not buying that this girl who, like, doesn't give in to her emotions ever is torn up about killing a horrible person. I just... I don't know. I don't buy it. We're, we're in the final episode, and things are, I assume, ramping up, and, like, 
I'm only on page two of this episode, and I'm sitting here just like, but why, why though? But why? Okay, I'm not <laughs> understanding. Uh, you guys, hold on, let me put this down. Um, I am enjoying this book, uh, so don't take all of my complaints too seriously, I guess, but also there are things that are bugging me. So we've made it to the last trial, and <laughs> Quentin's dilemma right now is that she either goes back on a deal she made with the Queen to let the Queen's daughter win, she does what the Queen's daughter wants her to do and just fights her hardest because the Queen's daughter wants to, like, beat her outright. Um, but her dilemma, so in making this dilemma, she's like, I either... <laughs> do what the queen wants or I become queen and it doesn't make any sense to me because we've had five trials right and there's been a whole ranking system like depending on how well you do in the trial is where you rank at the end of your, that specific trial you know what I mean it's, it's, and then they're all so you go to the next one but it's it's not making any sense it doesn't make sense to me because we've had this five five four five trials at uh, five yeah, anyway, we've had a number of trials, and in each one, you're ranked according to how well you do. And then you move on to the next trial, and then one, how you compete there, you're ranked according to how well you're doing, whatever. And Quinn has been failing, okay? She's like in the back of the pack. She's not been doing great. So, um, if winning the last trial is, is like makes you queen, what was the point of the rest of it? Like, what was the point of all of the trials if they don't mean anything? Because on the last trial, it doesn't matter where you're ranked. You just win and you win. Like, that doesn't... It doesn't make sense. There's not... There's not a point to doing multiple trials if they don't actually hold weight. You know, if you're not actually, like, scoring points that carry over to the next trial. This makes no sense. <laughs> I don't like this dilemma where she's like, do I do what the queen wants or do I become the queen? I'm like, you're not, you shouldn't be becoming the queen. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It's just, it's not making any sense to me. It's, it's like the snitch in Quidditch. You know, you play this whole game back and forth and one of you might be winning, but it doesn't matter because whoever finds the snitch is who wins. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. What was the point of the first four trials if this is the only one that matters? I don't... I... Ugh. Okay, um, so just before the, the trial begins with all the battling, um, <laughs> we see the flags <laughs> mounted vertically on a tall wooden board. Each one waves a different clan's color next to our collective points thus far. So clearly the points have been meaning something. Um... <sighs> and our girl is in last place, so I still don't understand her, like, I do what the queen asks or I become queen dilemma, because she's in last place. <laughs> does, does, I, I need to know the actual point system, like, if she wins this trial, is it actually enough points for her to jump all the way to the front? Because that's ridiculous, but, like, maybe it is, and maybe she's counting on the fact that the last trial is her clan's trial, and she's probably really good at it, so she assumes she'll win and therefore gain all the points and therefore jump to the front, but it doesn't actually make sense to have five trials, um, but like if you win the last trial, it doesn't matter what you did in the other trials. Like that part still doesn't make sense. But there's no, there's no numbers. It's very vague. You know, the points they've been earning. Who knows what those points were? We haven't talked about it. There's not a number system. I haven't seen actual hard numbers. Uh, so, so, I don't, I don't know. It, it's all very vague and confusing and I don't like it. If we wanted to have this dilemma of like, I do what the queen asks or I become queen, which actually the dilemma has completely changed now because there was this like, mic drop that the brother is not dead. I don't know what to do with that information. What? Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, but before that mic drop, the dilemma was I do what the queen says or I become queen. And if we wanted to have that dilemma, we could have just had Quinn not coming in the last place in the other trials. Like maybe not winning, but coming like second or third or something so that she's closer to the top so that if she wins the last one, it will make up enough points for her to win. Like that I could buy. 
but her being in last place and suddenly making up all of the points in one trial does not make any sense. Um, yeah. Also, I don't know what to think of her brother being alive. I don't. I don't. Also, I need to reread the entire book now because every single interaction with the love interest uh, was all a lie and I don't know how I feel about it. So I want to reread every scene with Aaron so I can like, I don't know, I see if I could tell. Like I didn't know, but like now that I do know, could I tell? I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, this, 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 here we are. Um, still very interested in the like suspicious queen, possibly the end of the world. Apparently, I, the brother's alive. Like all of that stuff is still very interesting. I'm curious if this trial itself will be interesting because it's the combat one. Because this is the clan that you know fights. Um, so I am very curious if I will actually feel the stakes of the combat, which I somehow doubt, because <laughs> we're 410 pages in, and I don't feel the stakes of any of the fights up to this point. But, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. But I am very interested in the, like, suspicious queen things. Yes. I'm not surprised that the queen has... Quinn's brother. I'm surprised he's alive. That was unexpected. Um, but I knew that he had something to do with her dying. Her dying? Him dying. Whatever. <laughs> Pronouns. <laughs> I knew that the queen was behind all the things, you know? Um, because she's been looking for the book that we were reading out of, and she's been making all these deals to cheat, and she's been, she's just been sneaky. Also, the antagonist that Quinn killed, and then was like, oh no, I killed someone, which didn't make any sense. But anyway, uh, when that happened, that person was, um, under the Queen's, like, you know, he was the right-hand thug. So, you like, just, you, kn you know the Queen's bad. Okay, um... None of the fights lasted longer than, like, a single page. Uh, it, it would start to get interesting, and I'd start to get invested, and then suddenly it was over. Um, so that was about what I expected it to be, to be honest. But then there was an earthquake, which I wasn't expecting, um, and I think we're about to dig into the parts of the story that I actually do find interesting, um, with the queen and the apparently not dead brother and, <laughs> you know, all the things. Um, possibly the end of the world. Uh, so, yeah. Guess we'll keep going. I don't know how I feel about all of this. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I'll just keep reading. Okay, um, <laughs> the climax was a wild ride. Um, yeah. I don't even know where to begin with that. I legit, like, I read the climax chapters and then I took a nap. <laughs> Which might have been, you know, like, less related to the book and more related to the fact that it's Friday and I'm physically tired. Um, but I did legitimately just take a nap. Anyway, I think I have landed on what it is about the high stakes or the tension scenes that are falling lacking. Falling lacking. Yep, that's what I said. Whatever. Um, they fall short for me, and I think I have landed on why. And I think it's the timing thing. Like, there's no time for me to sit in any of the emotions. Fear, panic, sadness. There's no time for me to sit in anything, because the minute it happens, we've moved on to something else. Um, which was even worse with the climax, because we were just bouncing around all over the place, and I was like, what is even happening right now? It's utter chaos. Um... Which, you know what, maybe that's the feeling that Brittany was trying to evoke for me. But, wow, that, it's just a lot. Um, but I feel like it's it was most easily defined, or like a, I was able to see what it was that was bothering me during the last trial, um, because Quinn had like a face-to-face -face combat battle with each of the other heirs, and none of them lasted longer than a page. So basically... <laughs> Just as I was getting, like, oh, something interesting's happening, it was over. Um, yeah. 
Because it's not that she doesn't, like, describe the fighting necessarily or describe things in an interesting way. It was basically just, like, we don't we don't have time to care whether or not Quinn will win because she's already won. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. That's what I have to say about that. I haven't quite finished the book. We've got, we've got a little bit. Um, we've defeated the queen. Um, which, like, that whole sequence happened so quickly. I liked the little secret plan that the group had and, like, ending the battle with killing the queen's daughter. Like, it, it was delightful. I liked the plan. And I liked the way it was executed. And I liked that she didn't explicitly tell the reader that that's what was happening until afterwards. Um, but also, it happened so fast. And, like, Vale is dying. And I don't have time to feel any kind of way about that because two seconds later, Vale is fine. <sighs> I wanted to feel something about that. You know? This sort of, like, enemies to kind of friends to, like, the sister I never had situation between these two girls would have made that, like stabbing her in the chest incredibly impactful if I had felt it but I didn't I didn't feel it um, so there's that but all of the stuff with like the history of the mystics and the Numa and like all of the stuff that I have been finding interesting this entire time was definitely interesting throughout the climax stuff and now I don't know we have the Resolution, I guess. I don't know how things are going to be wrapped up or what's going to happen next. I guess I'm kind of curious to see, but it also felt like it ended... The last chapter that I read ended in a way that like I don't necessarily need more to the book. I have... Let's see here. I'm on 468 of 74. So, you know, I have a little bit of wrap-up space now, but I don't feel like I need it. Like, Quinn became the queen. Um... And then she was like, yeah, I don't really want to do this alone, so how about we all rule together? And then everyone was like, that's a great plan. Uh, and then they have plans to deal with the leftover goblins and, like, uh, the queen's treachery and whatever. Like, they have plans for the future. We succeeded today. We have plans for the future. I don't feel like we need more. I don't know what's going to come up. Maybe she'll find a way to save her brother in this last chapter or something, but I don't really feel like we need that. We know he's alive. We know he's in the human world. We know that he went there to stop the queen from doing what she was trying to do. Like, we know he's a hero. We know there's potential that we could find him someday. I feel like it would just tie the ribbon too neatly to find him right now. I don't know. Also, to be fair, with all of my, like, complaints about the tension and high stakes and various other things, I, this book is not written specifically for me, it's written for teenagers. So, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, finished it. The last chapter was kind of cute. Um, it was, this was, I don't know, it was, it was just them... It was just the kids, like, sitting around the table and being like, yeah, we're the rulers of Phelan now. Um, we didn't free the brother, so I appreciate that. That feels like a book two adventure. Um, yeah, I did actually like, the very last chapter was actually from um, the Queen's perspective in the dungeons, with a big reveal of the other baddie, who apparently is the pirate lord that... Um, Quinn kind of views as a father figure, except we never actually met him, so, like, as a reader, I don't have an emotional attachment to him. I just sort of have this dissonant idea that Quinn does. So, whatever that means. Anyway, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I kind of complained about it a bit as well, but I actually, I did really enjoy it. I will, you know, read book two, assuming there ever is a book two. It was a fun, uh, like, magic system with the fairies and everything. Um, I liked the world building, and I really liked, the, like, the intrigue and mystery of, like, 
the world is possibly ending, but why and who's behind it and what's going on. Um, yeah, I really liked all of that. The fight scenes were a little lackluster, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. If I like, if I were to give this, I don't usually do this for books, but I feel like I need to do it for this book because I've been complaining about it, but I also liked it, so I feel like you can't really tell how much I do or do not like it without a rating, so we're giving it a rating. Um, maybe I'll go give it a review on Goodreads, too, just for good measure. Um, anyway, point being, I would give it a solid 4 out of 5 stars because it was a fun read. Not great with tension holding, but it was a good read.